At one time, I saw that PayPal had, and this was years ago, like over 6,000 complaints at the Better Business Bureau. Now, I ask you, what business in, in everyday normal life, any business with that kind of complaint history would fold? Nobody would use them. If it was a local business, if it was a local mom and pop business, right, that you're going to use over there in your town, and you check with Better Business Bureau and they got 6,000 complaints, would you use them? No, you wouldn't. Nobody would use them and they would fold. The latest not so surprising on this end developments and in the news, PayPal. But listen to this. We made a video three years ago called the new dictators <laughs> and in that video we covered the household names of established companies that we're all so familiar with a handful of them and one of them was is PayPal and we talked three years ago about the things that were happening and how awful PayPal was to use and in that video we talked about how many business people were already choosing not to use PayPal for their business. Uh, since that video, you can see what's happened to the stock. It has lost more than two thirds of its value. And this is just the latest development. You know, this, is, this has been an ongoing thing for, for years. And this is just the final, you know, nail in the coffin kind of thing that, uh, you know, that just comes out in the news. And I'll show you here. A lot of people finally coming around, and uh, hopefully, the fact that we were we made a video well in advance of all of this latest news coming out. Hopefully, some of you uh, that were uh, following our channel um, were perhaps able to uh, make some good decisions and uh, not not be at the end of the line, so to speak, uh, kind of reacting to the latest news kind of thing because you you see people here that don't have a clue but just because they uh, haven't experienced anything like yeah, I'm, I'm a little confused about this whole PayPal thing I'm assuming it's for people that sell stuff I just buy stuff I don't know you know of course they will abuse anyone regardless whether you're just a buyer or a seller how but PayPal is reportedly bribing users in a late latest desperate move uh, bribing $15 to stop them from closing their accounts. Uh, again, this is just the, the crest of how they've been treating the customers over the last um, probably at least 10 years. You know, PayPal is notoriously a very bad company to do business with if you're a small business person. Many small business people that I have met that are online don't want to use PayPal. These are experienced small business people. They're serial entrepreneurs and they don't like PayPal. And, you know, PayPal freezes accounts, they rationalize, they give you reasons why they're doing it that make no sense. And maybe it makes sense to them, but if you were someone that they should be trusting because you've had a relationship for 12 years, you haven't done anything to uh, remove that trust and they aren't giving you any reason that tells you that you have done something to remove that trust therefore there is no issue it's just quirky online you know issues that crop up based on this age of the new dictators where you're just a number and you're someone that's not to be trusted because you're online and you don't have a relationship even if you've had an account for a dozen years and even if you communicate with them. In this particular case, I was saying what one fellow had his account frozen, the other uh, fellow that had a small e-commerce business, digital e-commerce, and because it was a small, uh, you know, it's just making a, a few sales. It's not a big, uh, it's not a big earner, you know, but it's an, but it's a, a going, a small uh, website that makes one or two sales a day, you know, for a digital product. And so there's not a whole lot of maintenance on this website. I mean, he doesn't really need to check into it, but every once in a while, well, it just so happened he, he kind of got distracted, and then this time he didn't check. He didn't go into the back end and check the transactions for a few weeks. Well, when he went back, he never got an, an email from PayPal. He never got a warning. He never got anything at all. PayPal had blocked his uh, 
he, he was not receiving. People were trying to purchase his digital product, and they were not able to because PayPal blocked the ability to purchase on, on the website. And when he followed up on it, it turns out that they just had some questions about a utility bill that had already been submitted. Okay, and this is on an account. It was not a new account. It was not a new application. I mean, you know, the guy complained. He's like, excuse me, but you just, I just lost three weeks worth of sales because you had some questions that you could have contacted me and said, we have some questions, please contact us. Instead, what you did is you blocked it and I lost three weeks worth of sales. So that to me is the age of the new dictators. YouTube vloggers are finally jumping on the bandwagon uh, after the news broke out. So I'm happy to be able to revisit the video we made three years ago about the new dictators. And isn't this exactly just like uh, a dictatorship culture? And uh, it just goes to show that uh, a lot of people are uh, slowly waking up. And that was three years ago when we made that video. When people are considering moving overseas, right, it, uh, it, it seems to me, I mean, these companies, you can sort of live without them. You know, a lot of people live without them when they're still at home, you know, in, in USA, Canada, wherever. But once you leave, it's like you become, you, you start realizing how much more, do I dare say, dependent you become on these companies and companies. And at the forefront is PayPal, the, the one that you, you know, buy and sell with. It's like, you know, if you're doing eBay or Amazon, a lot of entrepreneurs do do Amazon and I, I've stayed out of Amazon for so many years uh, different video and uh, although it was really tempting to get in it's always tempting to to want to sell on it because it's such a huge marketplace and it just keeps getting bigger and it's the same thing with PayPal even though it was as to me you know it's like this company out of the handful that I talked about in that video that was so uh, before it's time and again it's not that people weren't complaining about paypal for 10 years already it's just that nobody was speaking out about it you know uh in a public way you know even though maybe they were leaving comments and making complaints at the better business bureau at one time i saw that paypal had and this was years ago like over six thousand complaints at the better business bureau now i ask you what business in, in everyday normal life, any business with that kind of complaint history would fold. Nobody would use them. If it was a local business, if it was a local mom and pop business, right, that you're going to use over there in your town, and you check with Better Business Bureau and they got 6,000 complaints, would you use them? No, you wouldn't. Nobody would use them and they would fold. But in the case of these companies that become like huge uh, monopolistic uh, companies which I mean there have been people that tried to come up with alternatives to them all along but they're so huge it's like you know even the sharks on Shark Tank would scoff if anybody would come up with a new business idea saying that they were going to compete with somebody like PayPal and so but I like to say that the truth always comes out in the end in the end because it may take a little time to get there to that end part where the truth comes out and then the reality sets in that you're dealing with the company that has I mean it's like without engaging in conspiracy theories kind of discussions it's like I mean you know what does it look like they're doing we called our video three years ago um, the new dictators which was a title that was way I mean in hindsight <laughs> after 2020 you know, calling that video The New Dictators was uh, very uh, prophetic, I dare say. <laughs> and it's not a laughing matter because they control the ability to buy and sell, especially when people go abroad. That's one of the companies that, uh, that we rely on in order to transfer payments from, you know, cross-border payments. But things are changing and there are things in the works uh, that are uh, giving us more options so that we don't have to... Um, have to become victims uh, to extortionary methods. Um, you know, the word fintech kind of doesn't sit well with me. 
it's like financial tech which it's one of those words that well it's like PayPal and, and this kind of thing it's like the word itself is not the problem it's that you have you have bad players and you have good players and what we need is we need more good players in this fintech field you know we've we've got enough bad players and uh, unfortunately a lot of the systems that are used within the fintech community it's it's almost like uh when you when you give a human being the ability to have uh, too much power over people even though they're uh, a good person it's too tempting to uh you know become uh a tyrant you know if conditions make it easy to become a tyrant there's a tendency to become a tyrant as well conditions with fintech the way things are done in the fintech industry financial tech unfortunately create and establish the type of conditions where these companies become tyrants and so I, I'm really skeptical and leery of uh, even new entrants into this uh, a field that appear to want to be a, some sort of solution. I'll tell you, I have personal experience. I, uh, when we first went abroad 11 years ago, I'm trying to set up, uh, do an affiliate marketing a website, this kind of thing. And I was trying to uh, sign up. Now, keep in mind, depending on who you are and where you are in life, if we're talking about internationalizing your life or even just having a company that sells globally, a company that sells globally can have its corporate base in one country, it could have its payment processor in another country, it could have its customers on a global level. This is the new age. People that are going overseas and have online businesses, they're very in tune with the ability to establish oneself in this way in, on a global level, international level. And so for a company that purports to assist these kinds of businesses, even though they give the appearance of doing things that are much more global in nature, let's say internationalized, they really aren't. They're still using techniques that are really based on very narrow thinking. When you're an entrepreneur, you always have things going on and some things fail, some things succeed. And so you're, you know, you're just always doing uh, things, right? And so, but just to keep it simple, a lot of these uh, fintech companies use techniques that it just, they're the complete opposite of how you think they would do things based on the idea that their customer is an internationalized individual and or business and so the bottom line is that these companies they have the cancel culture power they have the power to uh, you know to cut you off and if we allow these companies to be a majority player in our life they can literally just cut you off and, and starve you and cut off your your ability to buy and sell as i said in the other video and there's a lot of talk now coming out of uh, parallel economy and we and that's part of that the same discussion is to start thinking about and we should have been thinking about it all along and uh, and I've been uh, hinting around in my videos how unwise and how uncertain uh, our lives are that when we put ourselves in a position of being solely and exclusively dependent on one or two of these uh, behemoth uh, global uh, companies like this and we have to be careful with even with the newest latest fintech company solution to a problem that they they end up becoming the same thing that we're you know going from the frying pan to the oven scenario anyway i hope you got something out of that thanks for coming to the video and have a wonderful day